What's up, Dog Pound? Nathan Zagura alongside Sir Andrew Gribble for the two-minute drill presented by University Hospitals here at the Combine. And Gribbs, all the eyes on today. The quarterbacks take the field. Your big takeaways. Yeah, I think the clear thing that we saw today was that Jared Goff has a great release. I think he did everything he needed to do. Uh, to sol maybe not solidify, but he's now in that top two for sure. I think we knew that going, coming into this, but his performance didn't do anything to discredit him. I think the same with Carson Wentz, too. I think he threw, threw the ball well. This is a good environment for him. He's big. He just looks the part. But it's just going to come down to, I think, uh, I think what we saw on the field today is not going to be the deciding factor on either of these quarterbacks. They didn't do anything to maybe put themselves away. I think Paxton Lynch, though, I, uh, we said before, just didn't really have it out there compared to those two. Yeah, you look at Goff, of course he's going to thrive in a situation like this. He is the best pure passer in the draft, as we heard Lewis Riddick say when I talked to him earlier this week. Carson Wentz, though, comes out the velocity, the way the ball comes out of his hand. It's very apparent. He's got the size, can make all the throws. A little bit more of a project than, say, Goff was a little more polished, but certainly Wentz did a lot to solidify his spot. And as you said, we're in Indianapolis. They're the Colts. It's a two-horse race now. I think Paxton Lynch kind of has fallen off. Those two guys have certainly separated themselves from the pack in the discussion for the number two overall pick for the Browns. Now, one guy that a lot of Browns fans probably were looking at Cardale Jones judging by the radio it's all anybody wants to talk about unfortunately today didn't go like he wanted yeah his first 40 yard dash was actually really good and it, it, I thought it was faster than we might have expected that second one came up a little lame at the end it looks like it was a pulled hamstring done for the day not going to risk anything that puts a lot of maybe emphasis and pressure on a big Ohio State Pro Day in March he's going to have a lot of scouts watching his throwing Urban Meyer earlier today said he was going to improve his draft stock with his throwing. Now he's going to have to show that at his pro day on March 11th. Yeah, and this is an opportunity for him to have shown it head-to-head -head against Wentz and Lynch, who are in that second group with him, and unfortunately he didn't get that opportunity. Now another disappointing day for an Ohio State Buckeye. Braxton Miller kind of been the talk, the buzz, building up. Maybe he's going to run a 4-2, maybe he's going to run a 4-3. He comes out and runs a 4-5, and then the second one even slower than that. What does that do to his draft stock? Yeah, it makes you wonder if he is going to be that first-round kind of talent that we've been wondering about. It's just this is an interesting wide receiver class. It looks like Laquan Treadwell is the only real sure thing in that first round, which may be good news for the Browns. If the Browns want a wide receiver at number 32, they could potentially get the second or third best wide receiver in this class. Uh, Mike Mayock earlier today said it was one of the slower wide receiver yeah. classes he's seen in recent years, and I think a lot of these guys come in thinking they're going to have a great time because they've been hand-timed. Uh, in their preparation and their training. But out here, we, as we saw, the laser does not lie. Well, the one guy who was blazing fast, Will Fuller out of Notre Dame, certainly helped his draft stock. Josh Dotson from TCU measured in very well today. And those are guys that could be in play for the Browns at number 32 well, as well as Michael Thomas of the Ohio State Buckeyes. But I think when we leave here in Indianapolis and we head back to Bria, the clear takeaway is that everybody seems to think the Browns locked in on a quarterback at number two and that it's a two-horse race between Wentz and Goff. And the good thing is, is these guys both, it seems like you'll be okay with either yeah. one one of them. I think there's they checked a lot of boxes. They didn't do anything here to hurt their stock. I think it's going to be a tough decision for the Browns if they're going to stick with the quarterback at number two. Yeah, we'll see. And I think it'll come down to preference. Do you want a guy that has is polished, that seems ready to go, that understands how to play the game mentally and physically, or do you want the guy that is somewhat of a physical freak, an anomaly at that size, that speed, that athletic ability, and that ability to throw the football in Carson Wentz? And that answer will come later in April. For Sir Andrew, I'm Nathan Zagura here at the Combine. Keep it tuned to cleanbrowns.com and the Browns mobile app for the the latest on your Browns.